Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? You're good. I'm great. And today, I want to talk about the impatience. Impatience, I should say, not impatience. Now, impatience are a really common annual landscaping plant. They are perennial in zones 10 and up, maybe even 9B depending on your location and what your winters are like, but more commonly 10 and up. Otherwise, these are an excellent annual because they grow and grow and grow with very little maintenance and they flower profusely. You don't have to deadhead them. And there are three main varieties which can be used in different settings of the garden in your landscape. Now your main impatient is gonna be your impatience wateriana. These are the super elfin type, which means that they're just a much shorter grower. They shouldn't get any taller than 8 to 12 inches, though I have seen them get much bigger. I plant them every year, and they probably get closer to, I'd say, 18 to 20 inches by the end of the year. Simpatient likes shade. They don't need lots and lots of sun. I like to make sure that mine get about, I'd say, anywhere from 3 to 5 hours of morning sun. 5 hours is really pushing it. But they do like more sun than people think. A lot of the times people say you can throw these in deep, deep shade and they'll keep on growing. Well, that's only partially true. They'll get long and leggy where you'll have to be more on top of pruning them, cutting the top third off more often to encourage bushiness and growth from underneath. They're not going to flower as heavily either. So a few hours of morning sun is really great for these guys. So that's the super alpha. Now everything else I have here are the sun patients. They're a hybrid, but they do look very similar. New Guinean patients are going to have a more narrow leaf on them, and sometimes the flowers are larger but they do not like as much sun as the sun patients do. A sun patient, you can give eight hours a day of sunlight, full sun. The more sun you give them, the more bushy their growth is gonna be, and the more floriferous their flower production. Whereas the New Guinean patients, I would think four to six hours is about where you wanna be on sunlight. Not only do they have really pretty flowers, but the leaves come in all different shapes and colors. I mean, the shapes don't vary that much, but you get a lot of variegation in some of your varieties. Sometimes with the New Guinean patients, you have leaves that are more of a purple, and they're really, really pretty, but again, they're more long and thin than these are with their broadness. Like I said, the main appeal is that they flower pretty much nonstop once they get going, and they're easy and cheap. And I love how the leaves on them sometimes have this kind of sparkly appearance to them. That's really pretty too. Okay, so that's all about the sunlight. What about planting them? Well, I think I'm actually going to do a separate video on planting them, but I'll brief over it really quick. It's not time to plant them yet, and I'd rather show you than just tell you. But basically, they like a really well-draining soil that's organically rich. So you can go ahead and mend it with some hummus or whatever you want to use. But it shouldn't hold water for too terribly long. If you're going to pot them up, amending your potting soil with a little bit of perlite is usually useful because sometimes potting soils can be a little bit heavy for their delicate roots. So that isn't normally a problem. The main thing is that you don't want it to retain moisture for too terribly long, but these like to be watered often. These would not be considered a drought tolerant plant. I will say the impatience specifically are a plant that I have noticed respond drastically to drip irrigation. If you have these planted on drip irrigation versus just hand watering them, you are much more likely to get some really big healthy plants very quickly as opposed to if they're just getting watered by hand. The regularity from the irrigation straight to the roots seems to be something that they really do appreciate. So when planting them up, keep in mind the sun like I was talking about with your different varieties. Just like any other plant, dig your hole bigger than the root mass and amend it if need be. I have clay soil, I always have to amend mine. I do like to mix in some slow release fertilizer with them as they go into the ground and then I fertilize them monthly thereafter. However, these are very heavy feeders. You can fertilize them more often than that. I just don't really have time. I just reapply slow roots fertilizer for the most part. And aside from appearance, there are some other things that I've noticed that are pretty different between your regular impatient and the sun impatient. Mainly that the sun impatients are much more tolerant of cool temperatures. And I'm not saying you should grow these where you have 40 degree temperatures all the time, but your regular impatients tend to not do much growing or blooming until temperatures are warm, until you're above, I'd say, 75 is when you're gonna see the most growth out of these guys. And while that's also somewhat true of the sun impatience, once you plant them, they're not really gonna take off or do much until the heat sets in. In the fall, when the temperatures start to cool, these will start to uh, lose their buds and wither away on you when temperatures are dipping into the 40s. For me, the sun impatience usually keep going and flowering until the frost kills them back. They are very frost tender. The frost will knock them out. But these keep going and showing a little bit longer than the regular impatience do. But that comes with its own group of problems. You have to keep an eye on them for different types of rot when it's cold outside. 
nighttime temperatures are lower, they don't need to be watered the same. You have to change up your watering. You don't give them as much water. You want them to be more dry at nighttime to avoid rot, like I was saying. And I always try and make sure these are watered in the morning before the sun is like really on top of them. And then with my sun impatience, they get watered again in the late afternoon when the sun is off of them and through drip emitters so that the water goes right down into the roots. And just because the sun impatience can take eight hours of sun a day, they don't have to have that. I grow mine in part shade, mostly just because the sun is going away as the trees grow in my backyard. And they do just fine. They don't bloom as much as they did when they got a lot of sun. They're still getting about five to six hours and they still look pretty good. If you live someplace that's really, really hot and dry, say maybe Arizona, then you want to give them a little bit less light. Really the hotter your climate is, the less light. So even though it says eight hours, maybe go for six or make sure that some of those hours are filtered sun and not direct sun. That makes a really big difference if you live someplace and you struggle to grow these because sometimes the heat and lack of humidity can kind of play a toll on them. Although if given the proper care, these actually will grow really well for you in a dry garden. You just need to make sure they stay watered and they aren't cooked by the sun. And surprisingly, impatience actually do make a fairly decent house plant. They're not going to be something you stick in a dark room. Outdoor shade is still much brighter than most indoor sun. So they need a very bright location away from any drafts. You don't want to put them any place too dry, like near a fireplace or whatnot, because they're going to dry out a lot faster. Or you can keep them in those warmer spots if you want to, but you're going to need to water them much more often. The warmer and sunnier the location you have them in, the more they're going to bloom for you. You just dig them up, I'd say a few weeks before your frost is going to hit, throw them in a pot that's bigger than the root ball, and give them a couple weeks outside to help establish them in the pot. You can cut the top third off the plant, that'll help encourage new root growth and make the plant more bushy as it starts to grow back out for you. Like I said before, when these guys get leggy, you can just cut the top third of the plant off, you can cut the top half off if you want to, and they'll get more bushy. These grow very, very, very fast. Like this little sun impatient right here, which is in, you know, just a little like three inch pot, this guy is is probably only a few weeks younger than this big one behind it. Once the heat sets in, they will grow like madness. When it comes to the Sun Impatience, you have your Compact, your Sun Impatience Compact. So this is Sun Impatience Compact Neon Pink, Compact Deep Rose, Compact Pink. And then with these variegated ones, you sometimes have spreaders. They don't always label them as spreaders, so you need to watch out for it. But instead of getting really tall and bushy, they'll get more of a gentle mounded shape that spreads out further. So not really a trailer, but a spreader. This one right here is Sun Patient Spreading Tropical Orange. And this one up here is Sun Patient's Compact Tropical Rose. Really pretty sparkly flowers. That's, this one's probably my favorite of the variegated varieties because I really like the contrast between the flower color and the foliage. When you mix in that variegated foliage, I they really draw the eye at nighttime. It, they light up a little bit and it looks really cool. I don't notice the pollinators fussing with my impatience too much, but I plant a lot of impatience merely because those loud splashes of color that are everywhere help to draw them in. And the hummingbirds will fly around them a little bit, but they don't stick to them for very long. I have noticed, however, that hummingbird moths really do seem to enjoy them. And these guys are a tropical plant, so of course they do prefer a slightly more acidic soil over an alkaline soil, though they're not terribly fussy with that. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Just some quick plant chat about impatience, about the different types. I thought it would be good to go ahead and do this now because you can kind of see some of the different options before it's time to actually go out and buy them. You can get online, do some research and see what you want to look out for if you're even into impatience and know what to do. A lot of this is probably very redundant common knowledge for more experienced gardeners, but for the noobs out there, hopefully this was nifty. These are easy plants to grow. I recommend them to everybody. And the vibrance of the flowers is really pretty much impossible to get on camera. It, it just doesn't show. I've been trying for a while, yet you just can't really tell. That one actually looks pretty much the same on camera. Ah, anyways, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It helps the video so, so much. And I really do appreciate every single one of them. Subscribe as well. Upload multiple times a week. I'll post my social media stuff down there in the roots of the video. You can follow me. I'll follow you back. We can look at each other's plant pictures and have fun nerdy plant time together. Or just comment down below for the heck of it. I love talking to y'all. All right. And as always, everybody, hope you're doing well. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.